Hello, my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to find the domain and the solution set of the following equation. Here in our equation, we have a square root, and in our square root, we have our variable x, and x is also on the other side of the equation. Let's start with the domain first. The domain of an equation tells us which values we are allowed to use for our x. So our x here and our x here. Do we have some mathematical issues that could occur depending on the values we insert? On this side here, we can plug in any value for x. We don't divide by zero, for example. This would be some kind of mathematical problem that could arise. But on the other side here, we have to be careful because we are not allowed to take the square root of a negative number. So we have to make sure that everything we have in our square root is positive or zero. So this everything in here has to be equal to or greater than zero. So let's see which x um, do that for us. So we take everything in our square root, the x plus 28, and see when is this equal to or greater than zero. Let's solve this for x by subtracting 28 on both sides so that we get x, these two cancel out, is equal to or greater than zero minus 28 equals negative 28. So this is the condition I get. My x needs to be equal to or greater than negative 28. So starting at negative 28 and going up, all these numbers are allowed for my x. So my domain, if I call it d, is the interval starting at negative 28. So this number is included. That's why the bracket here, the negative 28, is allowed that I insert this and all the numbers that are greater than this as well. So going up till infinity. I can't reach infinity. That's why I have parentheses here. This is my domain. First part done. Let's take a look at the solution set on the next page. To be able to find the solution set of an equation, we just have to solve it for x. Our x is in the square root here, so to be able to get x out of here, we have to square the equation at some point. The question is, when is it a good idea to square the equation? Right now, at the beginning, so I would take the left side and square it, and I would also square the right side. Is that a good idea? Not really, because we have this plus here, so this is going to be messy if we simplify this. It would be better if our square root would be isolated on one side. So I want to get rid of this plus 2 here by just subtracting this two on both sides so that I only have the square root on my left side. So I get the square root with everything that was in there. These two cancel out and on the other side I have x minus two. Now I only have the square root on the left side and now is a good idea to square this equation. So we write it in parentheses and square it and the right side as well. The important thing is if you square your equations, you always have to think about that you check your solutions at the end. So as soon as you square your equation, it can happen that you get fake solutions. <laughs> That's not a joke. So don't trust your solutions anymore. As soon as you square your equation, always check the solutions at the end. But we are allowed to do that. So if we square here, we get rid of the square root. So only the things that were in our square root are left on the left side. And here, yeah, we have to square these parentheses as well. So we can just multiply them by themselves. So write it like this and then just multiply these two parentheses. We leave the left side as it is and here we multiply each element of the first parentheses 
by each element of the second. So we have x times x, which equals x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4. Let's simplify this a little bit. Maybe the negative 2x minus 2x equals minus 4 x, so I can write this like this. And then if we want to solve for x, we have x squared in here. So this is a quadratic equation. Um, to solve for x, let's, let's bring everything to one side of the equation. So let's take all of this and put it on the right side by subtracting x and also subtracting 28 on both sides of the equation so that we get this cancels out, this cancels out. We only have zero on the left side. Here we have our x squared. Negative 4x minus 1x equals negative 5x. And here we have 4 minus 28 equals negative 24. Let's solve this equation for x. It's a quadratic equation, so we could use the quadratic formula to solve this. Or if these numbers here are nice enough, we can also use factorization to solve this equation. And this is something we try now. So I want to write the right side as a product of two parentheses. I have an x here, an x here, so that I get the x squared here. And then I only have to search for two numbers. I call them a and b b and I have two conditions to these numbers. The first condition is if I multiply these two numbers, so my a times b, then I get this number as a result, the negative 24. And if I add these two numbers, so I do a plus b, then I get this number as a result, the negative 5. So let's try and find numbers that fulfill both conditions. First, my product. So a number times another number ne equals negative 24 would be something like 1 times negative um, 24, for example. This product equals negative 24. But if I add these two numbers, 1 plus negative 24, then this is not negative 5. So these numbers don't work. Uh, they are not close enough, uh, by the way, because here we have um, negative 23 as a result. But something like 3 times negative 8, for example, is negative 24 as well. And if I add these two numbers, then it looks good. Then I get negative 5 as a result. So these two numbers work. I take the 3 here and the negative 8 here. And then I solve my equation because now I have a product which equals zero. And this is only possible if either the first part of my product equals zero or the second part. So I can split this one equation into two simpler equations. Either the first part equals zero, so x plus three equals zero, or the second part x minus 8 equals 0. And now I solve each equation separately for x. So I want to get rid of the 3, so I subtract it on both sides so that I only have my x here. This cancels out. And on the other side, 0 minus 3 equals negative 3. This is my first solution. And a second solution, here I solve for x by adding 8 on both sides of the equation. I get my x, this cancels out, and on the other side I have an 8. So this is my second solution. And I go to the beginning. This was my equation. These are my possible solutions, I still have my domain here. First, I have to check whether these numbers here are part of my domain. So are they greater than negative 28? Yes, that works. But we also remember that we squared our equation. So we have to check both of these solutions. 
So we take the negative 3 and insert it for every x in our equation and see if this equation is valid. So we have the square root of negative 3 here for my x plus 28 plus the 2 and then I want to see if I get negative 3 again as a result. Negative 3 plus 28 equals 25. The square root of 25 equals 5. So I have 5 plus 2, which is 7, which is not negative 3. <laughs> so this is not correct. So this is actually not a solution. It's not part of my solution set. Let's check the second solution. So we plug the 8 into our x here and see if this equation is valid with our 8 for our x. 8 plus 28 equals 36. The square root of 36 equals 6. So I have 6 plus 2 equals 8, yes. So this is the only element in my solution set. So if I call my solution set S, it is the set with the element 8. And this is the only element that solves my equation. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.